components and groups are a very important part of SketchUp and a very useful way of organizing your model. So right here you see um, a component, um, well both actually just groups, um, but, but the idea is like, what if I wanted to make several of these? And as I copy, I'm using the M command, um, I'm going to put a X and I'll put actually X times six. You see six of these. Uh, no, actually it makes it seven. Six more. Um, if I go in here and I I change something, I'm going to add a little bit of a line on that face. Or if I um, want to come back and say, uh, maybe I want this a little bit smaller. Well, the rest of these are not going to change. So we definitely need some way for all these to be coordinated. So if I undo, and go back. Uh, if I actually, when I make it, either select component or if I make a component out of a group, I'll just call it object one. There's a lot of different settings now that can be put on your little uh, group. So you can have a description of it. You can uh, align it to a particular as axis, horizontal or vertical, so you won't be able to rotate it. Or when you bring it in, um, you can make it the face component for the face of the camera. This is a setting for probably with you're using people, so they're always facing the camera. Um, then there's some other tags and information that uh, would be useful for um, different building information modeling or BIM components. But uh, we're just going to make it simple. Just make the name. And now, um, if we don't want these these to have, we're not really going to change this. It's fine. But if we now do this, where we want to copy all of these, and it's fine, we'll just use that. And we'll do times six. If we want to come in here and change this surface, you'll see that it's changing every single one of these. So that's very useful as you can imagine. And that's the main difference between a instance and a of a you know pretty much a group. Um, pretty much the instances of the groups, even if I copy it, they don't really relate to other groups, but the instance of the component is with the mother group. And um, there's a ability to, while you're working on either group or a, as we now, you see everything is grayed out. We're now working inside of that component. And the same thing happens when we're inside of a group. You can see everything is grayed out, so you can only work on that group. So that's really a great isolating feature. And you can also, if you go to your, um, your, your, your visuals as you're looking into your model and you go to edit, um, you can work on uh, different things for um, closing that group. Um, or you can open it with your edit command. Um, I typically go by double clicking um, the object. And so each one is different. And so uh, there's another useful feature here. Um, and I was seeing if you could uh, directly see it. But uh, if you're trying to um, work on this and you don't really want to see the rest of the model, um, you can actually start to customize some of your commands. Um, and I know I like to do it. I think this has actually come standard. Uh, you can press when you're in an object in a group or a component, press H and you hide the rest of the model. If your setting might not have that, you can always come over here to uh, work on the uh, particular settings in, in your model um, using preferences. Um, and you can, in your shortcuts, uh, type in hide rest of model.
hide unselected or hide uh, view uh, component added uh, hide rest of model. Here it's assigned as a H. You could, you know, sign it as R. And it tells you if it's used by something else. And it says, would I like to be assigned? No, but it's already set to what I like, so I'm just going to cancel. And so uh, now if I press H, we work on that. However, I'm working on the component. If I press H, it will show the other component instances. They're all linked. Um, so now another useful tool with working with groups and components, just in general, uh, is the ability not just to copy and paste and sort of go linear, but you can also go based on a circular center. So you can do a, a polar array. And it's very nice to say polar array. Um, and one way, if I want to use this center, I probably want to have these things centered a little bit. I'm moving these and I'm seeing the inference for the midpoint is intersecting that surface. And if I want to, if I want to uh, make an array, I'm going to press control as I do that. And I do times or x3. So now we have four, but I just as easily could have done I'm seven. Um, make sure you do that while it's selected, so it's it doesn't expire pretty much. Um, times times seven actually. If, if you're doing ninety degrees, it's going to actually backfire. It's all overriding itself. But if I do times it's going to actually um, if I do actually divide so I'm going to show you this one as well if I do divide by five it's going to actually do five of these within that angle so there is times times three but there's also divided divided by four and that does equally spaced units between and if you can do that also that array go down we're going to do this times eight and these are not accurate so one way to control it if we want to make circular is we can always and rotating, we can choose that angle. So if you want to do an angle of 60 times 5, there we have that controlled angle and all of these units. Now there's not a 3D array. If you want to make 3D for these, um, you just pretty much Make a, a separate copy, and I'm pressing Shift to select each one of these. And you just pretty much go along axis and times three. And that's how you would do something like that. And so that's using components and using groups and arrays.